Hey everyone, in this section, let's take a look at a feature introduced in Unity 2018, the shader graph. The shader editor is a new user interface allowing you to create custom shaders for your game without needing to write any code. Our objective over these first few lessons is just to go through the basics of the workflow and build a simple tool to tint certain objects in the scene when you hover your mouse over them. Making something glow in the UI is a very basic use case of shaders, and this is a great example just to help us familiarize ourselves with the shader editor. In order to follow along with these lessons, make sure that you're using, at minimum, Unity 2018.2 or Unity 2018.3. And note that shader graph is only functional for the lightweight and high definition scriptable render pipelines. It does not work with the built-in pipeline, so just be mindful of that restriction. Let's create a new example project, and we'll just build this from scratch. From the Unity Hub, create a new project with the plus new icon. Make sure that you're using Unity 2018.2 or above. As we mentioned, I'm going to use Unity 2018.3, which is currently in beta as of this recording. Now, once again, the shader editor and shader graph do not work with the built-in pipeline. You'll need to use one of the SRPs in order to see the resulting shaders. So be careful what you choose in the template. You want to select either lightweight render pipeline preview or high definition render pipeline. I'm going to choose the lightweight render pipeline to keep things a little bit less heavy, but the HD render pipeline should work just fine. Give the project a name and browse for a location. Mine will just be called shader graph intro or something like that. And then go get a cup of coffee while the project builds. It should take a minute or so to import all the assets. When it's finished, you should see the default sample scene. It's this construction site with a workshop theme. We have lots of little props and game objects. So it's actually a good scene to start with. So let's continue the demo just using this sample scene. To make sure our render pipeline is set up properly, let's check out the package manager. Because we chose the proper template, we should have the lightweight render pipeline package already installed. And you may need to update to the latest and greatest. Mine is already up to date, but if for whatever reason, the project doesn't build with the latest package, just use this button and drop down to install a specific version number. Again, I'm using 2018.3. In older versions of Unity, you might need to import the shader graph package separately. And that shouldn't be the case with later builds. It should be included with the SRP. But in older versions, go to the All tab, and there is a separate package for Shader Graph. Once we have the proper packages installed, we just need to check one more thing with our pipeline settings. And you can find that under Edit, Project Settings, Locate the Graphics Settings. And this interface is slightly different than in older versions of Unity. Starting in 2018.3, there is a unified settings UI that's separate from the inspector. In this graphics settings at the top, just make sure that you have a valid SRP asset plugged in here. Now, in this case, the sample scene already has an SRP asset installed properly. And you can see that in our project, we already have a bunch of SRP assets in the settings folder. Currently, we're using the LWRP high quality and there are low and medium quality settings in there as well. If you swap to those, you'll see that our on-screen rendering does change a little bit, and most notably, the post-processing and the bloom disappears if you're not using the high-quality settings. Now, if you want to create a custom lightweight render pipeline setting, you could just right-click in the project window and create rendering lightweight pipeline asset. This creates a data container that holds whatever specific settings that you want for the lightweight render pipeline, and it's just a scriptable object. Now, it doesn't matter what settings you use as long as the first field of this graphic settings window is populated with something valid. I'm going to just switch back to the high quality settings and drag that into the field. And now we're all set up and ready to create some materials and shaders. The goal for this exercise is to create a non-photorealistic shader to call the viewer's attention to part of the screen. If you have a 3D user interface for the player, you might want to highlight a specific game object under the mouse pointer, for example. And let's just start with a simple shader and then build up to making this glowing shader. 
We'll just pick one example game object to start with. So let's choose the hard hat object on the workbench. And I think the game object is officially called the safety hat. The first step is to create a material and a shader. So let's just right click and create material. And I'll call this hard hat highlight matte. And I'm just keying off of the original name of the material and then just sticking highlight somewhere in there. Eventually we'll toggle between the normal material and the highlighted material. Now because each prop will have unique textures eventually, we do probably want a new material for each highlighted object. All right, so that's gonna be our material for the highlighted safety hat. And now let's create a new shader, specifically a shader graph. So right click, create shader. And now we have three options that say PBR graph, subgraph, and unlit graph. Any one of these three options will create shader graphs. Now in our project, we want the physically based rendering shader graph. So select PBR graph, and let's call this highlight shader graph. And now we need to connect the shader with the material. Remember that each material has exactly one shader. By default, the material is using the lightweight render pipeline standard shader. Now this is a variant of the built-in standard shader, which you can't use with this pipeline. For example, if you try to switch to use the standard built-in shader, that doesn't work we get the magenta broken color to indicate that something's not right. In this pipeline, we're restricted to only shaders supported by the LWRP. The shader graph that we created is supported, even if this one isn't. To connect the material to the highlight shader that we just made, select highlight shader at the top. And once we do that, the magenta is gone and we know that this shader is valid for this pipeline. Now the material preview still shows up as a dull gray. It's not terribly exciting, but that's a start. Having a non-broken material is a good thing. Now before Shader Graph was implemented, in order to create shaders, you needed to learn a special language called HLSL or CG, depending on whether you're talking about the variant from Microsoft or Nvidia. Let me show you an example of a traditional shader. You don't have to repeat this. Let me just make one temporarily and I will open it in Visual Studio. The shader actually consists of a mixture of two languages. At the core is a small program written in a high-level shading language. That's either in HLSL or CG, and that's this block in here. You can see where the CG program keyword starts the block, and this NCG keyword terminates the block. Everything in this block is the actual shader, and that's the part written in HLSL or CG. Everything outside of that is a language unique to Unity called Shader Lab. That's all of this stuff out here. The Shader Lab portion is just to interface with Unity and allow the editor to talk to the smaller CG or HLSL program inside. And that lets you set and get data in the inspector, then pass that information to and from the shader itself. Now, for most people, this is just not fun to use and work with. Now, both the shading language and shader lab have a bunch of conventions that you need to learn before you can really do anything useful with them. The initial learning curve and the investment up front deters a lot of casual shader writers like me. Often there's a disconnect between creating shaders traditionally with code like this and then seeing the final result visually. And that's where shader graph comes in. We can ditch writing shaders in shader lab and the high level shading language and just work using an interactive graphical user interface. If you've ever used a 3D application like Maya or Substance Designer, any application with a node-based UI, you'll feel totally right at home here. To edit the shader graph, either double-click the highlight shader graph asset that we just created, or hit this button that says open shader editor in the inspector. You should get a separate UI window, that's called the shader editor, that opens up, and here's where we're gonna do all the work creating our shader graph in the next lesson.